close your eyes and watch your breath all the way in, all the way out. Each breath as it comes in, in and out. Try to get your mind to settle down right here. You can let go of everything else you've been thinking about, all your responsibilities from yesterday and tomorrow. Your only responsibility is right here, right now. Develop some inner wealth. So much of our activity in life is centered on getting outer wealth. It's time that we looked inside and get develop some inner wealth right here. It comes from being generous, being virtuous, developing discernment through meditation. These things are the wealth that protects you, that protects the mind. Because outer wealth can protect you only up to a certain point, and then it's always going to leave you. But if you've developed inner wealth, that doesn't leave you at all. In fact, that sticks with you all the way through your life and on into your next life. So it's wealth that's really worth looking after. When we come and we ask for the precepts, it's like asking for a big hunk of money. So when we convert generous, okay, it's we're trading our material things for wealth inside. The quality of the mind that comes when you're generous is very, is very wide open, spacious. It's much nicer living in a spacious, generous mind than, it li than living in a stingy, narrow mind. Because no matter how large your house may be, if your mind feels narrow, if your heart feels narrow, okay, it's a very confining place to be. So we practice generosity as a way of opening up the mind, expanding the home of our mind. And then with the precepts, we protect ourselves. We, here we, what we give up here, what we're making a, making a trade for is that we're not going to act just on our moods. We've got some principles in our actions. There are certain things we just will not do in any circumstances. And that's wealth. And there's a sense of self-esteem that comes with that. You realize you've been born in this human world. You've got all these good human qualities and you're using them well. You're not using them to harm anybody at all. Whether it's in terms of your body or in terms of your mouth. Our human mouth is very special. As the Buddha said, when you're born, you're born with a sword in your mouth. It can cut both ways. You can cut through a lot of problems by the way you speak, but you can also cut your own throat by the way you speak, or stab other people by the way you speak. So you have to be very careful. This sword of the tongue is a very sharp weapon. If you use it well, okay, then it, then it becomes an instrument for good. It's like any kind of knife. You, things that need to be cut, you can cut through them very clearly. Okay, then you've got something good there. So you've got this human mouth. It's much better than any other mouth that there is. So make sure that you use it well and maintain it. You went to all this trouble of becoming a human being, now make sure that you maintain it so you don't lose this treasure. And then for the meditation, okay, you sit here and you give up all your other concerns right now, all your other responsibilities, and you focus directly on the mind, looking after the shape of the mind. How is the mind right now? Is, is it mindful or is it mindless? Is it discerning or is it muddled? Okay, what can you do to clear it up? We'll get it to settle down and be still. Once the mind is still, okay, then you've got a really, really good noble treasure in there, because that enables you to see what's right and what's wrong, and to be able to trust your judgment. So as we come to the monastery, as we practice the Dharma, it's all to gain inner wealth. So I have a sense that these things really are important. That's much more important than exterior wealth, because those kind of things, they can be taken away from you, or either through natural causes or through other people, or you have to leave them. But with inner wealth, nobody can take it. Nothing can destroy it, unless you destroy it yourself. So it's up to you to take care of your inner wealth. You've got the precepts now. Okay, treat them like gold. There's something very precious. People who have the precepts are a light to other people in the world. We look around us and we see so many people breaking the precepts one way or the other. And look at what it does to the human race. It creates all kinds of trouble. We can be a beacon, we can be a light to other people, showing this is how you live a human life. This is how human beings should behave. And whether they take the example or not, at least we're setting the good example. So we're doing this for our own benefit, for the benefit of others. That's like taking your wealth and sharing it with others. And sharing it in this way, your wealth is not diminished. In fact, it increases. So make sure that you look after your virtue, your generosity, and your meditation, because these are forms of inner wealth. They'll keep you from being poor, that will keep you from suffering hardship wherever you go. Mm -hmm.